نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم عما بعد فعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما اللهم فقينا في الدين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا التباعة وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا جتنابا اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما آمين ثم آمين Okay, so today, inshallah, we're going to start a new section in which Imam Ibn Taymiyyah is telling uh, us about the part of Iman. We should have faith on the fact that Quran is the Kalam of Allah and it is not the Makhluq. So uh, let's start this uh, section. Al Imanu bi anna al Quran. Kalam Allah, Munazzalun Ghayra Makhluqin. Faith in the Quran as it is revealed, hmm? as the revealed, as the thing that has come down. Munazzalun Ghayra Makhluqin. Ghayr, that is not Makhluq, a Makhluq. It is uncreated. It, it wasn't created, it is a speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ومن الإيمان بالله وكتبه الإيمان بأن القرآن كلام الله and part of faith in Allah and His books so both of the this type of iman in Allah سبحانه وتعالى and His books is the faith that the Quran is the word of Allah so we must have iman in this fact منزل it has been revealed it has come down غير مخلوق it was not created it is not a مخلوق it is not a creation من هو بدأ it originated from them, from him. It started from him. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ilayhi yarud, and to him it will return. Wa anna Allah takallama bihi haqiqatan. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke it in reality. And the fact, iman in the fact that Allah speaking it in is reality. That is a haqiqat, that is the truth. وَأَنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَهُ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ هُوَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ حَقِيقَةً لَا كَلَامَ غَيْرُ And that the Qur'an that has been revealed to Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is the word of Allah in reality. Not the speech of anyone else. Not the speech of anyone else. Now let me give this to you an example. Now if you have a small child, let's say he's three or four years old. Hmm? And he's talking to you and he does conversation with you. Uh, and then, you know, somehow, somehow, uh, you know, someone from the household makes him uh, learn the uh, kalam of uh, Iqbal, shairi of Iqbal. And he has learned all those verses and he know, you know, he can recite that shairi. And now what happens is, that while talking to you, all of a sudden he started starts reciting uh, Iqbal's kalam, the kalam of Iqbal, and he starts reciting shikwa and jawab shikwa and all of those verses. Now tell me, when he, when that small child is reciting that, is anyone ever going to say, "Oh wow, that kalam is so amazing"? Is anyone ever going to have? Any doubt that this is the kalam of that child? No. No one will have that doubt. Why? Because you know that this kalam can never be from this child. That the child is too small, number one. Plus, Iqbal has already said that kalam. So no one is going to say that, oh, this kalam is from this child and it is this child's kalam. No. Since it, it was initially said by Iqbal, those verses will be attributed to Iqbal, right? So uh, just to explain this fact to you, that whoever says those words, whoever, uh, you know, uh, who's the, the person from whom that, that Kalam had originated, Till forever, that kalam, till the day of judgment, that kalam will be associated with that person from whom that kalam had originated. Okay? No one else can take the credit that, oh, I am the one who 
said these words. No. So as far as Quran is concerned, Quran is the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It started from Allah, it originated from him, and it is going to go back to him. Hmm? It will return to him. So that is why G, uh, yes, uh, Manahil, yes, this is in the book. In the Arabic the, is in the book. Yes, it is there. It is in, uh, you know, the complete book uh, that I have shared with you. It is the one with the word to word translation. So you are going to find these, uh, this in that book. But the book that I had shared with you initially, uh, the colored version, it doesn't have this text in it. Okay, it's not complete. That book is not complete. Okay, now let's come back to the uh, to the topic. وَلَا يَجُوزُ إِطْلَاقُ الْقَوْلِ بِأَنَّهُ حِكَايَةٌ عَنْ كَلَامِ اللَّهِ أَوْ إِبَارَةٌ It is not permissible to claim that it is a narration or meaning of the word of Allah or an expression of it. Ibara means that it is just an expression. So we cannot say that it is a hikaya. Hikaya is a narration or like a a story, for instance, and somebody has told you about this event. And then when you tell it to someone else, it's going to be using different words. The words are not going to be repeated, but the story is going to be the same. That is a hikaya. Now over here, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah is saying that it is not permissible for us to claim, for anyone to claim that Quran is a narration. That is the meaning of the word of Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something and now, you know, the meanings are being deduced and that is the Quran. No, that is, that is not uh, correct. Or even that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something and now the explanation of it is the Quran or the expression of it. No, it is not right. بَلْ إِذَا قَرَأْ so rather if people read it out or write it in a scriptural copy that is called a mushaf and the plural is masahif so a mushaf is what it is a copy of the quran the book in which the text the arabic text is written that is called a mushaf and the plural is masahif. So if people are writing it down in masahif, or if people are doing qira'ah, are reciting this Quran, it would not exclude, lam yakhruj bidhalika, it would not exclude it from being the word an yakuna kalam Allah ta'ala, that it is the kalam, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, haqiqatan, in reality, in truth. Fa inna al-kalama innama yudhafu haqiqatan ila Man kalahu mubtaidan mubtadida sorry mubtadi an mubtadi an so every time I um, teach this course this single word I get so confused in that so alhamdulillah today this time uh, I got it right the second time last time I remember I was teaching this uh, same course to Talim Quran and I got stuck on this word so it is basically mubtadi an mubtadi an right so it, it's from ibtida starting, right? Man qalahu mubtadi'an. Whoever said it in the start, in the beginning. La ila man qalahu muballighan muaddiyan. It's not going to be associated to the person who has later announced it. Iblah, who is doing iblah. Muaddiyan, who is declaring it, right? So if somebody is standing on a pulpit and he's reciting or he's telling someone or he's doing waz and he is reading out an ayah of the Quran, it would not mean that this that these are the words from that person. Never, ever. It is always going to be the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's going to be, it's going to remain that way. وَهُوَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ حُرُوفُهُ وَمَعَانِيهِ so it is the speech of Allah in letters and its meanings. This is an amazing thing because you know that Hadith Qudsi, this is a special type of Hadith in which the, the huruf are not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only the meaning is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said something to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in meaning and then Prophet sallallahu described it to us. 
that is called hadith qudsi that is not called quran even though the meaning came from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now as you know that injil uh, as far as injil is concerned allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to isa alayhi salam and isa alayhi salam used to explain so it is full of sermons from isa alayhi salam that is not the word of allah that is isa alayhi salam stating the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but as far as the quran is concerned the biggest miraculous aspect from the quran is that its letters its words and its meanings all of them have come from the quran from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the kalam that is the speech of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not include anything anything of the kind from his own memory hmm there was a time when uh, the sahaba used to be writing down the quran and they were also writing down the hadith and they were also also writing down the explanations from the quran but when the quran was written down in masahif it was made sure and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ensured that people when they read the quran when they recite the quran only the portion that was revealed to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by allah subhanahu wa taala only that content is secured and saved as far as the torah is concerned if you look at the torah uh, you will see that all of the kalam of allah has been mixed with a lot of other things so in that the uh, the statement that came down from allah subhanahu wa taala the explanation from people has been mixed so the first thing that happens is that when you're reading the torah you will find that the words of allah and the words of musa alayhi salam how he used to explain it and then the words of people of the rahman the scholars of uh, the jewish scholars all of those words are mixed up and you can never find out then when the kalam of allah is taking place and when you know something else has started when is you know somebody else is explaining something but here it is beautiful that allah subhanahu wa taala so that the hidayat so that the guidance could be secure till the day of judgment and no one can have any doubts in what is the kalam of allah haqiqatan in truth and reality allah subhanahu wa taala secured and saved and promised the hifazat promised the protection of the maani as well as the huruf so wa huwa kalam allah hurufuhu wa maanihi so it is the kalam of allah it is the speech of allah in letters and in meaning laysa kalam allah al huruf dun al maani it is not the speech of allah just in letters without meaning wal maani dun al huruf dun al huruf or meanings without letters we cannot say that so when we talk about quran being the kalam of allah we are going to have faith in the fact we're going to have the iman that the words came from allah and the meaning of those words also came from allah subhanahu wa taala we cannot give the ayas our own meanings that oh at this place the salah it only means that you know iman or faith or if we have iman that would only you know that is uh, because in in one place in the quran allah subhanahu wa taala when he talks about changing of the qibla uh, allah subhanahu wa taala told the companions that he is not going to waste the iman so at that place the tashri the meaning that had been come, uh, come down from allah subhanahu wa taala and explained that by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam of iman was salah that the, the prayers that you have been saying previously on that uh, the 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 previous um, qibla will not be wasted so if someone comes along and says that oh you know over there the name iman was used for salah so over here when you know allah mentioned that you have to pray this just means that you have to have iman because some people started in, interpreting this like that so basically if allah subhanahu wa taala has not given that interpretation if allah subhanahu wa taala has not given that meaning we can never ever give it our own meaning no one can give it the meaning not even the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was allowed to give his own perspective or his own meaning the meanings were explained to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam by allah subhanahu wa taala and that is how protected the quran is till this day okay so the next topic that we're going to do that is you know 
very very important topic and he it this the iman on this particular topic also changes our life completely the life perspective the way people see death and the way you know a person looks at life itself and the whole of the the thought process is changed this is an amazing and amazing part of iman that we're going to study now and that is al iman bi anna al mu'minina yarawna rabbahum yawm al qiyamah faith that the believers will see their lord on the day of resurrection wa qad dakhala aydan fi ma dhakarnahu min al iman wa iman bihi wa bi kutubihi wa bil malaikatihi wa bi rusulihi and included also in what we mentioned of faith in him that is in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his books his angels and his messengers al imanu it is the faith it is the iman bi anna al mu'minina that indeed the mu'minin yarawnahu yawm al qiyamah they will be able to see him on the day of judgment ayanan bi absarihim hmm they will see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of resurrection with the vision of their eyes now there is a sect who does not believe in the attributes of allah subhanahu wa taala and they start claiming that this is just going to be a dream that the mu'minin will be shown they will just see allah subhanahu wa taala in their dream but our faith should be that we will be able to see allah subhanahu wa taala why is it that the people uh, say that they won't be able to see allah subhanahu wa taala because of this aya in the quran they also give this logic that la tudrikuhu al absar that uh, eyes cannot have idrak of allah subhanahu wa taala but as we see in different hadith as we see in the quran itself allah subhanahu wa taala has mentioned that they are going to be looking at allah subhanahu wa taala and the the way prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has described us is that right now right now we don't have the power to see allah subhanahu wa taala but on the day of judgment allah subhanahu wa taala is going to create uh, the creation in a completely different new creation and people will be given the power the eyesight is going to be more powerful the hearing is going to be more powerful every sensitivity is going to be more and more powerful much much enhanced so that the people of janna can enjoy janna to the fullest and the people of hellfire can be tortured to the fullest now um as far as uh, we okay aisha shariq you are asking what page is this one on all right now uh, what i want you guys to do is just follow the word to word translation book that i have shared with you okay and inshallah taala you are going to find it just let me help you out in this if you want uh so basically uh this page is page number where is the page number so the page number you can find this is chapter if you follow the it's a page 56 open up page 50 no for that the word to word translation and you open up page 22 and just scroll up and down inshallah taala and you will be able to find uh, the uh, the page okay all right okay so let's just come back to the topic okay as if you if you want to ask for a page or anything uh, you can see sister um sister atiya you can just message her privately and she'll inshallah tell you the page number so that the class is not disturbed all right jazakallah khairan okay so um where were we all right so uh, we were studying that on the day of the resurrection mu'minin 
the believers will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the vision of their eyes. Okay? Ayanan bi absarihim. They will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their eyes. Kama yarawna shamsa sahwan. As they can see the sun on a clear day, laysa biha sahabun. There are no clouds obstructing that vision, that view. There are no clouds in front of the sun, just as you can clearly see the sun. وَكَمَا يَرَوْنَ الْقَمَرَ لَيْلَةَ الْبَدْرِ Or as you see the full moon at night. At a full moon night, you see the moon. So, لَا يُظَامُونَ فِي رُؤْيَتِهِ There is no pain or no difficulty in seeing him. No matter what big crowd you have, if you have thousands and thousands of people in a plane, they won't be saying, oh, I can't see the sun in the sky. Oh, I can't see the moon. No, everyone will be able to see that, right? So similarly, all the mu'mineen will be able to view Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yarawnahu subhanahu. They will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa hum fi al qiyamah. They are going to be in the plains of resurrection. In the huge, vast plains of resurrection. Then second time they're going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after they enter paradise. Kama yasha Allah ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Now, uh, the next section that we are going to do is Al Imanu bikulli ma akhbara bihin nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mimma yakunu ba'd al maut. Uh, so we have to have faith in whatever Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, has reported us of what is going to occur after death. What's going to happen after death. Well, min al-imani bil yawmil akhiri and on the, uh, and part of faith in the last day is what? When you say that I have faith in the day of judgment, Sorry, there is a question. Just let me take the question. Tahura is asking, will only the believers destined for Jannah be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the plane? So it is said that the believers will be seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. So um, hopefully those people who, uh, hopefully believers will be able to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment as far as we see uh, that about the hisab of the Mu'mineen, inshallah ta'ala, we are going to uh, cover that chapter also. So let's just see what comes in the book, inshallah. Uh, let's see if we can answer that question later on, all right? Currently, let's just uh, focus on this particular uh, area. وَمِنَ الْإِمَانِ إِمَانِ بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ الْإِمَانُ بِكُلِّ مَا أَخْبَرَ بِهِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم مِمَّا يَكُونُ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ فَيُؤْمِنُوا بِفِتْنَةِ الْقَبْرِ وَبِعَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ وَنَعِيمَتِهِ نَعِيمِهِ فَأَنَّمَا الْفِتْنَةُ فَإِنَّ النَّاسَ يُمْتَحُونَ فِي قُبُورِهِمْ فَيُقَالُ لِلْرَّجُلِ مَا الرَّبُّكْ وَمَا دِينُكْ وَمَا النَّبِيُّكْ So, وَمِنَ الْإِمَانِ بِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Part of faith in the last day or the day of judgment is الْإِمَانُ So, this is the description of the Iman in day of judgment. What should we have faith in? We should have faith in Al-Imanu bikulli ma akhbara bihin Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in every single hadith that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us. He has given the news of us mimma yakunu ba'd al maut of whatever that is going to happen after death. Fayu'minuna bifitnati al-qabri. So they have to have faith in the test and trial of qabr. So they have to have this, uh, this faith in the uh, fitna of qabr, the trial of qabr, Okay, and what is that? This this is coming ahead, inshallah, the fitna of the qabr. Wabi adab al qabr and the adab and the punishment in the grave. Wa naimihi and there's going to be blessing in the grave also. Fa amal fitna too. So as far as the test of the grave is concerned, fa inna nasa yum tahuna fi qaburihim. Indeed, the people, all of the people, each and every single person is going to be tested in their graves. They are going to be tested in their graves. Hmm? So uh, 
a man is going to be asked, Marrabbuk, who is your Rabb? Madinuk, what is your Deen? Mannabiyuk, who is your Nabi? So even though these questions seem very simple, oh, they're just three questions, nothing big about it. But this imtihan, this fitna, this test, this trial is a very, very huge one. It is like an interrogation that is going to take place. Now, uh, what do we find from Hadith? Now, um, there was a Sahabi named Sa'ad bin Ma'ad, and he was a, a very, very um, brave companion of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? And he was the one that when he died, when he died as Shaheed, 70,000 angels came down at that time when he died as Shaheed, right? So, and this is the person, this is the Sahabi that when Prophet Sallallahu was calling people for, uh, for jihad at the time of Badr, right? At the time of Badr, because he was uh, um, uh, a Sahabi from the Ansar. So at the time of Badr, only the Muhajireen Ansar were told to come and fight because that fight was with, uh, you know, the Mushrikeen of Makkah and it was... It initially, it wasn't supposed to be a fight. They were just going to take back their, their uh, you know, the money that had been stolen from their homes by the Mushrikeen. So at that time, Saad bin Maaz said uh, to uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that if you tell us to jump into the river, we will do that. And he was from the pioneers of Medina the ones who accepted Islam at the very early age, at the very early time. And he was just ready to give that a sacrifice. He gave huge sacrifices, right? But when he was buried, when he was put in the grave, Prophet Sallallahu said to the Sahaba at that time, do dua for him because he is being tested in the grave. He is being tested in the grave. And this is a very, very well-known Sahabi whose Iman cannot be doubted, but still he was tested. There is not a single person who can say that, oh, I will not be tested. This test is a very dangerous one. This imtihan is a very dangerous one. Prophets even used to cry when they used to think of this test in the grave. It is narrated that once uh, Zakaria alayhi salam could not find his son Yahya alayhi salam anywhere. He looked and he searched everywhere. And eventually he went to the graveyard and he saw Yahya alayhi salam and he was just a young boy. And in a, a dug out grave, he was lying down and he was crying bitterly. So Zakaria alayhi salam asked him, what has happened? Why are you crying? And he said that the meaning of his words were that I am crying because I am so scared of the fitna of the grave. What is going to happen in this grave? What is the sort of test and trial I'm going to go through when I visit the grave? So this is a very, very huge trial that Prophet sallallahu has told us about. Now, definitely believing in something that has not come to us as yet is a very difficult thing. It's not very easy because something is in front of you and something is happening. You believe in that and something has been happening since ages and you believe in that. But when someone is telling you to believe in something that has not happened as yet because you see, you go and you bury the dead ones and you know, you cover up the grave and no one can find out what's going on inside the grave. But when Prophet tends tells us, we have to have Iman. How can, uh, how can we um, relate to this? Now, one thing that I usually tell in class is that there was a time millions and millions of years ago when there was nothing. There was nothing at all. Uh, there was no sun, no moon none of the constellations, no solar system, nothing, nothing was pre present. Now, if you were there at that time, hmm, 
and someone came and told you that there's going to be a time when there will be the earth and there's going to be a sun and the earth, you know, it's going to be so huge. Human beings are going to be living on those, that earth and that earth will be rotating around the sun and there's going to be a moon also in the sky and only at night time it will it you will be able to see the moon and then there was going to be a, a bright day you will see the sun at that time will you be able to believe that person no you will have millions and millions of questions how will this happen what's going to happen aren't people going to fall down from the earth how is it round and people are living on it what is it you know this it's going to be very difficult to believe but when the earth was created, when people started living here, then it was not difficult to believe, right? Now, go back 500 years, 500 years from now. If, if you were there and someone came to you and said to you that, you know, one day there's going to be, uh, you know, things that are going to be attached in your room that will give cool air. You know, freezing air can be come, okay, will be coming out from your inside your room. And you will have sort of like camels. You will have these, uh, you know, metallic sort of uh, animals. And when you sit in those, even cool wind will come inside of that room. That will be, you know, you will be able to transfer from one place to the other in that. And then if someone comes to you at that time and says, oh, they're, and you know what? There are going to be metallic birds in the sky. And hundreds of people will be sitting in the belly of that bird. And it, that bird will be flying from one place to the other. And even cool winds will be coming in that bird inside the belly. Will you be able to believe that person? It's going to be like a very shocking thing. It's going to be very difficult for you to believe in all of this story, right? So now when someone is telling you hmm, that after you die, you will be put inside the earth, you will be able to feel whatever is happening to you. You will be questioned. You will be made to sit inside the grave once again after you die. You will be made to give questions to answers to certain questions and then you are going to either feel torment or you are going to feel happiness or you are going to go through this amazing amazing experience based on the questions based on those answers that you give to those questions so now you will realize that you know if we haven't gone through that experience we cannot believe it we cannot have that firm belief but when that thing is going to happen, hmm, it's going to be a reality, you know. That is, our, that is part of our faith. This is the reality. That the intihan and the fitna in the kabar, in the grave, the interrogation, it is there. It is very, very much true. So it's better that we prepare for these questions in this dunya, in this world. And how will we be able to prepare for these questions when we have faith in our Rabb, when we are obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when Allah subhanahu wa when our Iman is kamil on Allah, only then we can give the right answer. How can we, you know, give the answer of Wama Dinuk when we have full faith in whatever has been described to us in our deen, the way of life that we are, we are told is perfect, the perfect one. There is nothing wrong with it. Whatever Allah has told us, we obey in, you know, our heart is completely, uh, you know, submitted to that. We are okay with that. We are happy with that. رِدِّيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبْضًا وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا وَمَنْ نَبِيُّكْ And how we'll be able to answer this question when we have complete faith in Prophet Wasallam that he in reality is the last Prophet. He has brought down the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever his sunnah is, whatever his siyah is, that has taken place. And it is true. And our love for him is more than anything else. So what's going to happen with people in the grave? 
So those people who have Iman, who have faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them tathbeet. Tathbeet is steadfast, being steadfast, being firmness, being firm, sorry. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them firm. Who? Those people who have Iman. Bilqawli thabit. With the unshakable firm words. With the word of firmness. With the, with the word that is unshakable. That is steadfast. When is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to give them uh, the people of Iman firmness? Fil hayat dunya wa fil akhira. In this uh, worldly life as well as in akhira. So what do you think is qawli thabit? Those people who have studied the Quran and done the tafsir are going to be able to answer me really. Well, bil qawli thabit. What is the qawli thabit? Hmm? How, you get, how do you get the speed in this dunya and in akhira? What is the qawli thabit? Come on, reply to me quickly. Excellent. Saima, la ilaha illallah. That is the kalima tawheed. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. This is the qawli thabit that gives us uh, firmness and it makes us steadfast in this dunya and in akhira. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us. Hmm? So we have to have iman in these words. And then the result is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us steadfast. So the mu'min in the grave is going to say, he's going to reply, Rabbi Allah. How will be he be able to reply, Rabbi Allah? Because he had faith in La ilaha illallah. Right? Rabbi Allah. He's going to reply, Rabbi Allah. Well, Islam udini and Islam is my deen. Wa Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam nabiyyi. When we have faith that Muhammadur Rasulullah, when we have faith in this, definitely we will be able to, inshallah, reply to that question in the grave also. And as far as the person who has doubts, the doubt, doubtful person is concerned. It's a person who had doubts in Allah, who had doubts in Islam, who had doubts in Prophet Muhammad wasallam, who was doubtful about all of these things. Hmm? So if that person has doubts, he is going to say, فَيَقُولُ هَا هَا Oh, oh, لَا أَدْرِي لَا أَدْرِي I don't know, I don't know. سَمِعْتُ nasa. I had heard the people saying, يَقُولُ يَقُولُونَ They were saying shay'an something. فَقُلْتُهُ Then I said it also. Because everybody was saying, so I also said it alongside. And I don't have, you know, you know, the clear knowledge. I don't know exactly what is true or not. So what's going to happen with that murtab, with that uh, person who had doubts, the doubtful person? For yudrabu bimirzabatin min hadidin. He is going to be beaten up. He is going to be hit and struck with bimirzabatin, with a hammer. Min hadidin, made of iron. What does Prophet ﷺ tell us about this iron, about this hammer, sorry, made of iron? Prophet ﷺ told us that it is going to be so heavy that the people of Mina, if they all try to lift it, they will not be able to lift this hammer. So this is going to happen to the person who has doubts in Allah being their Rabb, in Islam being their Deen, and in Muhammad ﷺ being their Nabi. They are doubtful. Their iman is not strong. Hmm? They have, sh uh, they, you know, th they're shaky. And they're asking questions and they're, they're not uh, completely steadfast on the answers. Murtab. So basically, this, uh, that is why, you know, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the book, the first thing that he says is, kitabu la fi. This is the book in which there is no raib. There is no shak. There is no doubt. The first thing that we need to do to be sure in the guidance, we have to be sure in the guidance, we have to remove all the doubts. Removing the doubts is the most important thing because over here we see that the person having doubts is going to be beaten up in the grave. He's going to go through that azab in the grave. 
Now, as far as this Azab is concerned, when he is going to be hit by these huge hammers, for Yasihu Sayhatan, he is going to scream a huge scream. Yes, Ma'uha Kullu Shayin. Every single thing is going to hear that scream, illal insan, except for the human beings. Walau Samiaha, if the human being would have heard it, Al Insanu, the human being, Las uh, Las he would faint. They would become unconscious if only they would hear that scream. So once you know this happened, that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by the graves of the Mushrikeen and his riding camel went out of control due to those horrific sounds. People couldn't hear those sounds. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that I was a if I was not afraid that you would stop burying your dead, I would pray to Allah to make you hear those sounds. Those sounds are so horrific. You know, somebody screaming and shouting with pain and that pain is just, and this, this pain goes on. It doesn't stop, you know, right there. It just goes on and they're constantly beaten up. All right. Now, uh, let's study about Al Qiyamatul Kubra wa Ahwaliha, the great resurrection and its horrors, whatever is going to be happening on the, uh, uh, on the Qiyamatul Kubra, when the main uh, big Qiyama is going to happen. And then after this trial, Imma Naimun, either there will be blessing wa Imma Adabun or there will be punishment. So after this trial in the grave, till the day of resurrection, either there is going to be uh, blessing if the answers were correct. Wa Imma Adabun and if the answers were not correct, there will be punishment. Ila and Taqum al Qiyamatul Kubra till the time when Qiyamatul Kubra is going to be established. The greater resurrection is going to be established. Fatu'adul Arwahu ilal Ajsad. So the souls, the Arwah, the Ruh, this is Arwah is the plural of Ruh. It is going to be returned to the bodies. So as you know, that after the test or the trials, the ruh, as the Quran states, they either are put into al These are the, the successful ones, the people who will be uh, getting the blessings in the grave. They will be uh, placed in the al It's a place where all the good arwah are placed. And the bad arwah, so there, there is no third place. There is either, you know, the, the Liyin or the Sijiyin. There is no middle way that we can say that, oh, we're going to just be in the middle and nothing is going to happen. No. It's either the Liyin or the Sijiyin. Sijin. So the Sijiyin is a place where all the uh, Arwah who are bad, who are evil, who could not reply to all those answers, who were the Murtab, who were the doubtful ones, they are going to be placed. And the ajsad, the jism, is going to be um, disintegrated in the grave. So uh, only the, the um, ajsad of the shaheed will be exactly the same. It does not disintegrate. It remains the same. And this has been proven in history, this has been proven. You can look it up, uh, you know, about the graves of the Sahaba. At one place, they, you know, uh, a little time back, they came into the dream of the ruler, the head of the Muslim uh, state at that time. And they also came in the dream of the Grand Mufti of that place. And they kept on saying that, you know, uh, water is coming in our graves. You have to remove the grave, uh, remove us from the grave. So when they actually did that, uh, they could see that the the bodies of the Sahaba were completely intact, and uh, there was such a beautiful fragrance coming from them. They were smiling. Their skin was radiant. All the hair were intact, even though it had been more than thousand years since they had passed away. So uh, the ajsat of the rest of the people, it disintegrates. The jism, it disintegrates. But what's going to happen on the day of judgment on taqum al-qiyamatul kubra, the, the bodies are going to be grown from the seed 
and that seed is basically the uh, the last part of the backbone and it is now from you know you find out from scientific research that that part of the bone it is called the tain bone if you look at your uh, spine if you look at the um, x-ray or just you look at the picture of the spine you, you can just google it up there is the last part of the spinal cord it is called the tailbone it is very very small and it does not disintegrate so it acts like a seed inside the grave and the jism the ajsat are going to grow from that when their time is going to come for the uh, day of resurrection okay all right so let's start وَتَقُومُ الْقِيَامَةُ الَّتِي أَخْبَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا فِي كِتَابِهِ The resurrection will be established which Allah conveyed in his book on the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala lisani rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam So about the uh, qiyamah, the establishment of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, described in his book as well as on the tongue of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَأَجْمَعَ عَلَيْهَا الْمُسْلِمُونَ and all of the Muslims have an ijma. So whoever does not believe in the day of resurrection is not a Muslim, basically. Right? So all of the Muslims have ijma that this is going to happen. So all of the people will rise from their graves in front of their Lord, li rabbil alameen. How are they going to be raised up? Hufatan, Uratan, Wurlan. So these people are going to be raised in a state of Hufatan. They're going to be barefoot. They won't have any shoes, anything under their feet, right? And they're going to be Uratan, without any clothes. They're going to be completely naked. On the Day of Judgment, when they will grow out from their graves, they will be completely naked. Ghurlan without circumcision, circumcision. So this, from this you find out that this is going to be a completely new creation. A new way of creation. So um, at this, after hearing this, Aisha radiallahu became very worried. And she asked Prophet sallallahu that aren't men and women going to look at each other? Meaning they, don't, they won't have any clothes. Aren't they going to look at each other's private parts? So Prophet ﷺ replied, Oh Aisha, the matter is going to be too grave. The matter is going to be too tough, too hard. And you can imagine this, that now the billah, if uh, God forbid, some sort of earthquake comes and the whole house starts shaking. A uh, person doesn't say, Oh, let me just change into some uh, real nice clothes. Let me just change into this, you know, uh, designer clothes and then I'm going to go out of the house. No person just runs out of the house without any shoes if they're in their night suit some there you know um, there was um, uh, my uh, my sister-in-law she was in Bagh at that time in Pakistan when the, uh, the the great earthquake took place and she said that the whole house started shaking and we we weren't wearing any chadars we didn't have that and the only thing that we could think about was we were barefoot and we just ran and we just pulled this cloth from the uh, table and one of us just pulled the cloth from the um, from the bed like the bed cover and we just you know because we were uh, afraid that we we're going to go without covering ourselves what's going to happen there was no time. So you see, at this time, when people will be uh, rising up from the graves, they will have nothing to cover them up. And plus, they are going to be so afraid. They're going to be so um, in this horrific situation uh, that they, they won't be looking at each other, right? So what's going to be uh, the situation at that time? What tadnu min humus shamsu? Tadnu is from dunu coming down. The shams, the the sun is going to come very down. It is said that it's going to be at a distance of just one mile. Imagine that today it's thousands and thousands of miles away, the sun. And still we cannot stand in the sun for too long. But on the day of Qiyamah, that sun is going to be 
only one mile apart from us. That is how low the sun will come. Well, Yuljimu Humul Araku. Yuljim is from, uh, is like a bridle that you put in a horse to control him. And Arak is uh, when there's a sweat coming down. Yuljimu Humul Araki, Araku, sorry, that this, that the, because of the heat, intense heat, the sweat will be pouring down. Everyone will be soaked in sweat. Fatun Sabul Mawazin and the weighing scales will be uh, established or erected. They will be set up. Fatu Zanu Biha Amalul Ibad. So the deeds of the ibad of the servants are going to be uh, measured. Hmm? They're going to be scaled. So what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about these? فَمَنْ سَقُلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ Thus whoever has his scale heavy فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Those people are among the successful ones. وَمَنْ خَفَّتْ مَوَازِينُهُ And whoever's scale is light فَأُولَيْكَ الَّذِينَ خَسِرُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ Those people are the ones who have lost their souls who have just, uh, you know, they have lost themselves Mm, they have done khasara. Fi jahannam khalidun. They're going to be in jahannam and they will abide therein forever. So now please note down in your uh, notebooks what is going to be measured in those scales. These scales are said to be huge scales. Like the earth and the heavens and all the seven heavens will be able to uh, be placed in those mawazin. They're going to be so huge. And what will be measured? There are three things that are going to be measured. Now you have to write these th th three things down. Number one, what is going to be measured in the scale? The amal of people. The amal, the deeds of people. So the deeds of people are going to be given a proper shape. They are going to be given a proper weight. Okay, so it could be that the same deed that a person has done, for person A, it would have more weight, but for the person B, it would be very light. And what would tell how, you know, how a deed is made heavy? It is made heavy by ikhlas, by the pure intention, by uh, the closest it is to the sunnah, by its value. That is how the deed will become heavy. Hmm? It will have value in it. It will, it will have weight in it. Number two, the amil is going to be placed in that scale. Amil, the person who is doing the deed. So it is said that a person, there's a hadith from the Prophet wasallam. It is said that a huge fat guy will be brought down on the day of judgment and he will be placed in the scales. But since he didn't do much good deeds, his weight will be very light. You usually say that that person is a very valuable person. He, you know, whatever he says has a lot of weight. But how can words have weight? Hmm? But still you use these words that that person, you know, when he says something, it has a lot of weight. Why? Because that person has this personality that whatever he says, it, it weighs, right? So even the people are going to be put in the weighing scale. One of the Sahabis, he was a very, very thin Sahabi. But, uh, and, and you know, once the Mushrikeen, they were making fun of his uh, calves, his legs. They were very thin. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and usually it was like a, a, a mocking point. You know, sometimes somebody is thin, somebody is fat, somebody's uh, complexion is not that fair. And, you know, everybody makes fun of that person because of that particular characteristic. So this particular Sahabi, he had very thin legs. He was very, uh, you know, he was very weak. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that on the day of uh, resurrection, on the day of Qiyamah, his, his uh, calves are going to weigh heavier than the Uhud mountain. You know, you know because, because of the... Uh, the sacrifices that this Sahabi did because of the uh, the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which he used his um, 
uh, his uh, himself right so the third thing that is going to be placed in those mawazin in those scales is the amal nama the book of deeds so the, there is a book there is a record and this huge recording system in which you know that is going to be displayed also so this uh, whole record is going to be placed on the uh, day of judgment if it has good deeds in it it is going to be weighing very heavy but it doesn't if it doesn't have much good deeds if it has more bad deeds then it is going to weigh very light and you know that who is recording this amal nama who is uh, given this uh, task of recording this hmm? do you know ji jazakallah saima naz uh, the name gave, gave the name of the sahabi that is abdullah bin masood now my question is who are those what is the name of those angels who are writing this book of deeds and where are they right now hmm? it is it has been mentioned in the quran excellent kiraman katibin kiraman katibin yes very good these are the kiraman katibin they for every single person there are two angels that have been given the duty of writing down the amal nama writing down our deeds and they are called kiram and katibin and one is uh, placed on our right shoulder the other is placed on our left shoulder they're not actually sitting on the shoulders but they are there looking very closely one has been given the duty of writing the good deeds the other has been given the duty of writing the bad deeds and and they are you know very swift they write all the records down they don't miss out anything not a word not a letter not an expression even the eyes the expressions the facial expression that we make by seeing somebody by looking at somebody if we are frowning whatever we are doing all of those things are being written down because allah subhanahu wa taala has given them the duty so uh, inshallah tomorrow we are going to study more on this topic and this is a very very important topic because it because the more iman that we have the more we are going to be living in that reality because sometimes when when we're living in this dunya we just get lost in it and we think that this is going to be forever and ever but when we read more about the resurrection and what's going to happen then uh only then we can uh you know live in that actual reality ji okay so you're asking about the three things the three things that are going to be weighed on the day of judgment one is the amal the deeds number two because the, i told you that the deeds are going to be brought up in particular form right number two the amil the person who will be doing the amal he himself is going to be weighed number three the amal nama this is the book of deeds the book of deeds is something different different than the deeds themselves so all of these three different things are going to be mentioned haanji yes tahura uh, you are going to be able to inshallah speak arabic this is uh, the language of allah subhanahu wa taala in the grave and in jannah also so the language arabic is known as the language of jannah and it would be better that we start studying arabic in dunya so that we can understand it more and we can be more accustomed to that language but allah subhanahu wa taala will be um, you know will be giving us this uh, the, the power to understand that language to understand what is being said and to reply inshallah So that's about it for today inshallah taala subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa